YouTube, Goon here, coming at you guys again with another review, an acronym review in particular, going over the SP28DSs, my first piece that I bought from acronym for retail, which is odd to think about in retrospect. The SP28s came out as a part of one of their summer drops. This was alongside um, a bomber jacket, as well as a couple of other really sought after pieces, and I was super excited to be able to get these by a odd coincidence of a friend being at H. Lorenzo the day that they dropped and having something in stock, it all worked out. Thank you so much, Steven, I really appreciate you. But now that I've had about a month to wear these pants on a very frequent basis, because I love these things dearly, I have a more well-developed opinion of them and how they work and all the little bells and whistles that you are familiar with when you get a acronym piece. So now I feel like it's appropriate to make a full video on them. With that in mind, even though these were a popular piece, there are still a few sizes floating around on the internet, whether it's on secondhand sites like Grailed and John Flip or some of the discords or things like Bodega and a couple of other sites, you can still find these shorts around for retail if you like. So I feel like this video will just give a little bit of insight into what you'll be getting when you buy these pretty expensive pants. Like with all of my videos, I'm going to be getting into the acronym itself, what SP28DS means, its history, the material itself, which is shoulder triskin, one of my favorite materials that there are, and then all the bells, whistles and quirks that you will find on a pair of shorts like these and I'll be trying to outline every ounce of it that I can. So without further ado, let's get into the pants, the short pants, the SPs. Regarding the history of the SP28s, Acronym seldomly has made shorts in the past. There are a good few iterations that I will have here on screen, but when they do stuff in dry skin with shorts, these are the only pants that they have made in that material. The last pair of pants to come out that were shorts in this material were the SP28 TSDS, say that three times fast, that came out in spring, summer 18. And what made those unique is that, like the name implies, there was a tech system, TS, on the pants, which was a roll top that kind of gave the pants a paper bag effect that you could attach well, anything that you could with molly webbing um, onto said shorts. So it was a really unique pair of pants, um, something that a lot of people desire nowadays, but this is the more pared down brother. And I think a lot of people enjoy these pants in particular because they're just a little bit more sleek. Three years later, we have the SP28DS in this black variant, but they also decided to come out with it in a RAF green, a very kind of light alpha green or something similar, um, a pretty light khaki color, but something that Acronym has started to dabble in with a lot of their more recent seasons. But they're no stranger to khaki in the first place either. So this is just a little bit more of a foray into other colors for them and I'm here for it. So the acronym itself is SP28DS, which stands for Short Pant SP28, which is the 28th pant model that they've created, and then DS, which is dry skin. Segwaying into dry skin, if you've seen my videos, you may be familiar, but dry skin is a proprietary material made by the Scholler Company. It's a four-way stretch fabric that has innate water wicking qualities with, along with a DWR treatment, and it's really lovely for hiking, just going out and about, warmer weather, colder weather because of the water wicking qualities and everything in between. It's one of the most versatile materials that I can think of, durability wise, wearability wise, comfortability wise, it just ticks a lot of boxes and I can see very easily why Acronym uses it. I find the material to be a great choice for a pair of shorts because if you're in warmer weather, this breathability is ineffable. And on top of that, if you find yourself in more, well, vigorous activity, the stretch and the durability that it has is lovely as well. I'm gonna have Acronym's description for these shorts in particular up here now so that you can see exactly what they were thinking when they put these pants out to the world. So that will be here for you to view. Some things that I enjoy from their description is how they describe these as unconventionalist, which I would say is true given the overall fit of these. They are pretty large and come over the knee, and I'll be getting into that with the fit and details. And I also like how they say that they're cut to move because that fit block that they use for these shorts really does allow you to have some motion. Again, something that I'll elaborate on later in the video. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the quirks and details of the shorts going from the top all the way to the bottom. 
The first thing that you're gonna notice up at the belt is, well, the integrated waistband system that Acronym has been using for a good majority of their pants throughout recent collections. The integrated belt system utilizes two buckles that sit medially on either side of your waist. You just fasten them down by pulling each cord with a good bit of vigor up against your waist. And what I will say is that compared to pants of the past, like my P27 HDSs and some other pants that have utilized this belt system, they really, really got it down with this iteration in particular. What I mean by this is that they're using new belt buckles compared to pants of the past, which just allows the belt to fasten down much more easily. And I'm here for it. It works incredibly well. Just below the belting system, we have the two front pockets that are concealed. I think this leads into the unconventionalist nature that Acronym used to describe these pants because the pockets themselves are concealed, like I just mentioned, and the way that you access them is kind of by going backwards towards your thighs and then forwards to actually be able to access the pockets. The pockets themselves are deep pockets, which are just cavernous in size and allow you to be able to put a wide variety of things into them. What is also nice about the pockets is that they have a slight bit of organization to them with a main pocket that falls to the front of the thigh and then a small back pocket that falls to the back of the thigh, which just allows things of certain weight to be able to fall into specific parts of the pocket, which just allows things to, well, without even really thinking about it, organize themselves. There's been plenty of times where I've put scratchy or generally sharp objects into the pocket along with something kind of fragile like my sunglasses without even thinking about it. And then the pocket itself actually organizes it so that the more fragile item is not gonna be distressed or hurt or whatever. And while that isn't to say that it's gonna work exactly like that for you, I've always ended up being pleasantly surprised by how items fall into their respective areas in the pockets. Keeping with pockets moving slightly inward from the hand pockets, we have the signature acronym foam pocket, which is a small slit that sits on not only your right side of the thigh, but the left side of your thigh as well. I think Acronym is getting a little bit more privy to the fact that there are left and right-handed people. And now as I watch pants come out season after season, more and more of the pants have these foam pockets on either side of the thigh to just account for that. And I'm here for it because not only do I have to necessarily use this for my phone, but it works for a wide variety of other smaller and more compact things as well that you're gonna be well, getting on a very easy basis. But what's really unique about these slip pockets, and I think it's a new feature within the slit pocket history, is the fact that there's actually a little bit of netting inside the slit itself so that something can be more secure if you are really truly doing vigorous activity and you need it to be, well, more secure. You just need something that's gonna hold it in place. While this has never necessarily been an issue with me and prior pants that have a phone slip that doesn't have netting, I really like the attention to detail that they are imbuing onto these pants and that little extra bit of, well, securing is really nice. And I can imagine that for somebody who's in these shorts and just wants to keep something especially secure, having that little bit of netting is awesome. On the back of the pants, we have the two final pockets, which are pretty typical. They're just two flap pockets with a little bit of material that covers the actual pocket itself. It's interesting to see the flap pockets used because for a lot of acronym pants, there's usually a YKK zipper and they've foregone that for these in particular, but it was also on the SP28 DS's of your, the ones that came out back in 2018, so they just recur here. The pants have a zipper in the middle so that you can do your business. It's YKK, I'll leave it at that. And then as we move further down the pants, we get to see what really gives the pants their fit, which is the low drop crotch in this edge to edge fit block that acronym is penned. I'll briefly get into the sizing of these pants, but it's really kind of hard to pin down exactly. For myself, I almost always just take a medium with acronym pants because that tends to be the most suitable for me with inseam in mind. I'm always kind of mindful of what their measurements are on their website, but medium always ends up being a safe bet for me. I went with a medium on these. The overall length fits just over the knee and the pants are just incredibly baggy and flowy. So it's something that you have to be mindful of when you go into buying the pants. When the pants are fastened down from oversized, the dry skin material and the overall size that the pants has creates pleating and just a unique fit and shape on the body, which I think is flattering, but also, well, unconventional, like they said in their description. So it's something to be mindful of when you go into buying them. That being said, I feel like these are probably the most wearable for the widest 
slew of people that you could find because of how boxy they are you're really just buying them for the comfort factor and just the overall cool nature that they have the last little bit of detailing at the bottom of the pants is the hem which is actually unique because it's not just a flat hem at the bottom medially on the right and left side of the thigh it is flat but on the inside of the thigh the hem actually goes up a little bit which makes it reminiscent of boxing shorts muay thai shorts and other similar shorts. And what's unique about that is that when you're standing straight, it gives a little bit more of a flattering fit to the pants overall. It makes it so that the hem is a little bit straighter, I find, than what it would be if you were wearing a pretty typical pair of shorts that just had a flat hem at the bottom for either leg. So those are all the details of the pants. It's pretty short because these are, well, a pair of shorts and it's pretty stripped back, but I'd like to get into how I style these because I think that these are particularly fun to style amongst the entire acronym catalog and all their items. I've had a lot of fun with these pants and styling them in particular. For this first outfit, I've got a pair of Oakley eye jackets on top, the Redux version in the all black colorway, easily becoming one of my favorite pair of sunglasses. I've got a vintage red bomber jacket, a black t-shirt, the shorts, and then I've got the Gel Kayano 14 UB1S from ASICS that I did a review on. Uh, I really like this fit overall because this is something that's gonna be nice moving into the summer because it's warm, it's kind of chilly because I'm obviously wearing shorts, it allows some aeration, but if it gets a little bit windy, the bomber jacket is nice, and the way that the colors intermingle with each other, I really like that too. I really do like how the shorts look with a jacket on top. Because of their length, I think the proportions are actually really nice and even, especially with a bomber that has a bit more of a crop. And again, if I just don't wanna wear the jacket anymore, I could take it off and I've still got a really solid fit. I do like the overall look of this fit too because it leans a little bit into more technical apparel, mainly with the eye jackets as well as the running shoes and these shorts, but it feels kind of fun and funky and has a little bit of quirkiness to it as much as I hate that word. So it's really up my alley in particular, but the general silhouetting I think is fun to play off of and I'll be sure to make more fits in the future that utilize these shorts and the kind of cutoff points that this fit exudes. Now for this second fit, I'm kind of taking that idea of wearing a jacket with these shorts and cranking it up to 11 mainly with a item that I'm very, very excited about, and it's a teaser as to a review that I'll be doing in the near future. On top, I've got a black beanie. I've got my Mikita sunglasses. I'm wearing the J33E, which is something I'm very excited about, and yes, I wanna make a review on this, so I'll try and do something in the near future. I've got the shorts, and then on the very bottom, I've got the Gel Kayano 14s that I've also reviewed. I really well and truly like this fit because the kind of variety that the jacket gives, not only in the way that it can be styled zipped up, but open along with how it interacts with the shorts is just really surprising to me. I didn't think that something that this long would look good with shorts, but given the length of the shorts, it all sort of equalizes out. The matchy matchy nature that this fit has is well, there in the first place. So please forgive me for that if you don't necessarily like matchy matchiness, but the green on the jacket works perfectly with the shoes and then the back strap on the jacket as well, the olive colored back strap works perfectly with the Synthesis Plus bag that I have and the green little extra baggie that I have hanging off of that. So I really liked how the colors all interacted with this fit in general. But I think the main sort of idea that I'm trying to get across with this fit in particular is the fact that the shorts with their length can be styled with a wide variety of jackets if you want to have that ventilation that shorts offer while having that extra bit of warmth that a light jacket or something similar might offer. With that in mind, would I wear this with like a wool overcoat? No. Would I wear this with like a capo ring coat? Probably not. All the jackets that I'm showing off in this video have a very lightweight nature to them, so I think that it works best in that circumstance, but at the very same time, this can just be worn with a jacket. That's just the point that I'm trying to get across. For this third outfit, I want to show off something a little bit more formal. On top, I've got the Sasquatch Fabrics button-up shirt. I've got my Kubo round pair of sunglasses. I've got the shorts, and then I've got my Robert Clergery mules on the bottom. And what I love about this fit overall is that it's something I can wear for work. It's something that's a little bit more formal, and yet everything still 
intermingles with one another, having something that's very classic in terms of material, like this starchy cotton shirt with something really proprietary and technical like the shorts, and it doesn't feel forced or weird. I know the acronym has the J72DS in white that they have released in the past, and that has a very similar silhouette to this shirt. So I figured, okay, well, I know about that shirt, and I have this one. Let me try and style it with something acronym related and see how it intermingles, and lo and behold, I think it works really well. I think that shorts can be worn in a more formal or kind of sartorial way nicely, but I think a lot of people also have seen how they can be worn in a not so nice way. And I just wanted to give my take on it and I'm actually really happy with the result. This will be great for, again, work, um, more summary occasions as we move out of quarantine and just other scenarios where the weather is warm and I wanna just have something that looks a little bit nice and not so, well, hiker or gorp or technical in the first place. I like the versatility that these shorts offer and it just, well, like I've been toting on about, works really well with all these other individual elements. So those are the SP28s. Let me leave you guys with some pros and cons that I've noticed throughout the time that I've been wearing these and I'll let you guys be on your way. Regarding pros, these pants are just incredibly versatile. The length of them makes them relatively unique amongst the lineup of shorts and pants that there are in general. At the very same time, even though they are big and boxy and flowy, they work with a wide variety of things that you can wear. You can wear these with a pair of mules like I showed off in the styling portion of the video and it has that more formal look. You can wear it with a t-shirt and some sneakers and the whole fit has been elevated because the overall silhouette of the shorts is really unique. The world is really your oyster when it comes to wearing these and styling them, and I think that they really can gel into a wide variety of people's wardrobes. I will always tote about the durability of a pair of pants that use dry skin, and these are no different. I've worn these for hikes. I've worn these in a wide variety of more vigorous scenarios, and they have held up, but in the very delicate situations where I've worn them, they're great too, so these pants are, something that are going to be usable for a wide variety of people. And even though they are expensive, you don't need to baby them because the material itself is made to be worn. So go into buying them knowing that. I mean, honestly, I just, I can't think of any cons of these pants. I, I think that the things that you're gonna have to take into consideration when you go into buying them are things that are just general for acronym as a whole. They are expensive. I guess that that could be considered a con. They are very, very blocky, but that is the intended fit for them. And I think people will want to buy them because of the fit in general. So the cons that I think could be given to these pants, when you look at them from a bird's eye view, are just things that come down to taste and preference. It's nothing that necessarily inhibits you from wearing them or makes the actual act of wearing the pants unpleasurable, so there's nothing that I can really say in that regard. These have really well and truly been one of the best pairs of pants that I've got in recent memory because they are versatile, they are unique, and they work well in a wide variety of ways in my wardrobe personally, and I think that they will be the same for you. So that's my video on the SP28DS. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm always down to interact with you in the comments section as always. And thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it. Have a good one, you guys. Stay safe.